definition of the H-1B visa as per the U.S. official uh, government website is that it is used to hire um, foreigners with highly specialized knowledge and only if uh, local American talent cannot be found. But if you dig a little deeper and read the official uh, documentation, you will uh, see that the companies don't have to prove that the H-1B for whom they're applying has highly specialized knowledge. All that the H-1B applicant needs to have is a bachelor's degree and that's enough. Also, in many cases, companies don't even have to try to hire an American. Um, there are many loopholes in the law that allow the companies to do this. We'll look at what these loopholes are in a second. The H-1B system was first created in 1990. Certain rules were introduced to protect the American worker and the H-1B worker. The rules are in the form called the Labor Condition Application or LCA Form 9035. Any company that applies for H-1B visa has to submit this form and agree to abide by the rules and conditions mentioned in this form. Let's look at what the rules in the LCA Form 9035 are. There are four rules. The first rule states that uh, an employer has to pay the H-1B worker uh, either the uh, local prevailing wage or the employer's actual wage, whichever one of those two is higher. Now this rule is uh, made in order to prevent the employer from paying too low to the H-1B worker and it establishes a kind of a minimum wage below which uh, the employer cannot pay the H-1B worker. This uh, local prevailing wage or the minimum wage for H-1B worker is set by the US government and it varies from area to area and uh, from profession to profession. Uh, the employer's actual wage is what the employer pays to existing American workers uh, in the same uh, field. Uh, the employer has to pay the higher of these two wages to the H-1B worker. Uh, the second rule states that the employer has to provide working conditions for H-1B holders that will not adversely affect the working conditions of American workers. Uh, this means that the arrival of the H-1B worker should not affect uh, the shifts, uh, the working hours, uh, or the vacations of American workers employed in that company. The third rule states that companies should not employ a non uh, that companies should not employ a H-1B worker in a workplace where there is a strike or a lockout, um, and this rule is meant to prevent uh, employers from replacing American workers who are on strike with uh, H-1B workers. The fourth rule states that the company that plans to bring in H-1B workers has to inform existing workers of their intent to bring a H-1B worker. They have to either inform the union leader of, uh, of that company about their intention to bring in a H-1B or they have to post a notice in a, in a prominent place so that American workers can know that uh, the employer plans to bring in I do not workers. want a green card This any rule was possibly made so that the American workers are informed uh, and that they can somehow negotiate and prevent the arrival of the uh, H-1B workers.